EC3 says he's going to fight on July 18th, which coincidentally is Slammiversary. More details have come out on Tessa Blanchard's departure from Impact Wrestling. Kiera Hogan is upset that she's not in the title picture after three years. And I discuss a couple of troll comments. That kind of got me a little ticked off. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. So, on Facebook Live, EC3 was on Facebook Live a uh, couple of days ago, and uh, somebody asked him about Impact Wrestling, and EC3 said that uh, he is going to fight on July 18th. That he is going to be fighting on July 18th. And we all know July 18th is the date of Slamversary. This is extremely, extremely interesting. And on top of that, on top of that, Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer. And I know not everybody is a big fan of, of, uh, of Dave Meltzer, but he says it's widely expected. It's widely expected that EC3 is going to make his return to Impact Wrestling at Slammiversary on July 18th. Now, I know EC3, he's been, he's been, um, teasing that he's gonna he's going going to ROH he's teasing he's going to AEW uh there was a video of him working out uh, not too long ago to um to uh, to smashing pumpkins music Billy Corgan NWA but um he's going to impact wrestling he's he's going to impact wrestling there's there there's no doubt in my mind there's no doubt in my mind that EC3 will be back in impact wrestling it, it makes the most sense for him it makes the most sense for him uh, to go back to EC East, um, to go back to impact wrestling because that's where he became a star uh, he tried WWE we all know it didn't work out for him because they didn't know what the hell to do with him so He's got the new essential character, uh, EC3, and uh, Impact Wrestling is the place for him. He's he's going back to Impact Wrestling, hands down. And and we know he's he's got a little thing going on with Moose right now. Uh, a few days ago, uh, Moose called him out on Twitter. Uh, Moose against Hernandez after the match. We all know, know EC3's music hit, so he's got a little thing going on with with Moose. So. And on top of that, he says he's going to f be fighting on July 18th. This, this is fantastic. So they, they actually announced Moose against Tommy Dreamer. They actually announced Moose against Tommy Dreamer. And not too many people were, were too happy to hear that. You know, I, I said on the last podcast, I hope that's not the match. But it kind of makes sense now. It kind of makes sense that it's Tommy Dreamer. Uh, because, one, here's what I think is going to happen. Here's what I think is going to happen. I, I have a feeling that that match is actually not going to take place. That Moose is going to either take out Tommy Dreamer or or someone's going to take out Tommy Dreamer and Tommy Dreamer won't be able to make it um, to, to Slammiversary. Thus, Moose is not going to have an opponent. You know, EC3's music hits and he comes out and we have EC3 versus Moose, uh, the TNA title on the line, even though it's not an official title. Uh, that's that's one scenario that I can see happening. Or Moose beating Tommy Dreamer rather easily and Moose saying that, you know, this is the type of competition I'm given, blah, blah, blah. EC3 music hits, he comes down and and they uh, square off in the, um, in the center of the ring. Whatever happens, it's going. It's going to be with Moose. Whatever, whatever. However, EC3 comes back into uh, uh, Impact Wrestling, it's going to involve Moose. I, I believe that a hundred percent. I don't think he's going to be the mystery, um, the mystery person in the Fatal Four Way match. I think that's going to be Eric Young or, or possibly Chris Sabin or or maybe Bully Ray. It's not going to be EC3. EC3 and Moose are going to feud. Plain and simple. That's what's going to happen. EC3, Moose, they're going to have the feud. And and as I said, as I said, you know, whether you're a fan of Dave Meltzer or not, 
usually when he reports something uh, that that I read, it's 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 true much of the time. I'm not gonna say all the time. It's true much of the time. And and he, like I said, said it's a tremendous possibility that uh, it's widely expected. I should say, a widely expected that uh, he's going to make his return to Impact Wrestling. And I hope it's a long term deal. I hope it's a long term deal. I hope it's a three year deal. I hope it's not just a one off uh, or um, or a two off um, uh, thing. I, I hope it's a, it's a it's a long term deal uh, with uh, with EC three. Very excited. Slammiversary is going to be a tremendous show. My only my only um, the only thing that I'm not too uh, happy about is it's not going to be in front of a live crowd. That it's not going to be in front of a live crowd because when all these surprises—I mean, we got Gals and Anderson are signed; they'll be there. Uh, EC3, I would say, ninety-nine percent sure that he's going to be there. Now, you know, what am I talking about? I'm a, I'm a hundred percent sure. I'm a hundred percent sure EC3 is going to be there. So EC3 is going to be there. Just it—it it would have been fantastic if it was in front of a live crowd, and, and maybe it will be. Maybe it will be. I know there are some, some. Um, Independent shows uh, taking place in Indiana that are taking place uh, in front of crowds. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe they could. Maybe they get a, get get a crowd of you know twenty five to fifty people. You know, I know you're saying, oh, big deal, twenty five to fifty people, but that's better than having no crowd. So hopefully they could get. Um, of course, if you know if you know, everyone's kept safe, you know they could safely get a crowd in. I think that would be fantastic, uh, but. I, I can't wait for July 18th. I cannot wait for July 18th. The only thing is I really hope that we do not see Super Eric. I, I hope Eric Young does not come back as Super Eric. Uh, I, I read, I, I don't want to talk about it much because I don't want it to happen, but I read a a story that uh, Super Eric will be the the um, the mystery person in the Fatal 4-Way. I, I don't believe that at all. I don't think I don't think they're going to bring him back as, as Super Eric. I think they're just teasing Super Eric. Uh, Eric Young will be back, but but not not as Super Eric. Not as Super Eric. But, again, Slammiversary. It's going to be one hell of a damn show, and I just I can't wait for that. I can't wait. So Tessa Blanchard, there are actually more details coming out now on on Tessa Blanchard's departure from Impact Wrestling. Some very, very interesting, interesting details uh, coming out about her departure. So let's let's talk about it. Here I was reading this article and um and uh, here's so here's what it says. It said um, Tessa Blanchard had no plans to wrestle during the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, which is fine. And she hadn't appeared on an episode of Impact since March seventh. So as I said in my last podcast, or one of my last um, past podcasts, you know, totally understandable. If she didn't want to wrestle during the coronavirus pandemic, totally understandable. You know, and then it said reports at the time of her firing noted. Impact asked Blanchard to send in the promo videos for Slammiversary, but she refused, which is a little confusing. I don't know why she would refuse just to send promo videos in, uh, but she refused. She refused. Then the promotion, Impact Wrestling, asked her to drop the title at Slammiversary, but she reportedly didn't want to do that either. So what's what's wrong here with Tessa Blanchard? And then, you know, then they all at, at the at the Slammiversary pay per view for a one day price, you know they they didn't uh, she did, they didn't um, announce what the price is or or mention what the price would be or or the price she was asking for. Uh, but Impact Wrestling refused to pay the amount she was asking for, and subsequently announced that she had been fired. So first thing, I wonder how much she was asking for. Okay, I think she was getting a little greedy here. And two, I think she was being a little selfish as well because one, Impact Wrestling made her the first woman world champion in professional wrestling history. In professional wrestling history. She wasn't the women's champion. She was the Impact Wrestling world heavyweight champion. And they gave that distinction to her. They had trust in her. They gave that to Tessa Blanchard, and she kind of took it that, and she kind of threw it back in their faces. Threw it back in their faces. I really wonder how much she was asking for. I really wonder how much she was asking for. She couldn't just do the right thing, you know, and and just drop the title at Slammiversary. She wanted a, a um, 
a a huge a, a substantial amount of money apparently a substantial amount of money and that impact wrestling refused to, to pay and and then you think that she's refusing to come back to wrestle at the tapings because of the coronavirus pandemic but oh oh but if you pay me this amount of money if you pay me this amount of money i'll i'll come back i'll come back for one night and um pandemic or not and I, and i'll drop the title as, as long as you pay me this amount of money so again tessa blanchard being extremely extremely selfish in my opinion and her firing was completely justified after reading that like i said the coronavirus pandemic you know, if you didn't want to come back because you're worried about, she was actually worried that she wasn't going to be able to get back into uh, to Mexico and uh, get back with her fiance Daka. I know they have a wedding coming up, and she was afraid that that she wouldn't be able to get back into Mexico and the wedding would would be postponed, and she didn't want to do that. And, and she, she's using she's using the coronavirus pandemic you know as an excuse. And and as I said, okay, that's that's a that's a legitimate excuse i fully understand but don't but don't say all right well i'll come back if if you pay me this amount of money i'll come back for one night and i'll drop the title and then i'll take my chances on getting back into into back into mexico because the money you pay me will be worth worth it for me to to try to get back into mexico and if i don't get back into mexico you know we'll 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 postpone the the wedding and but i'll have this amount of money um because uh you're overpaying me to come in to to drop the title so so that's 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 that appears to be the story there and then you know you have daga you have daga her fiance who you know by the way you would feel you would feel that that he would he would uh back up tessa blanchard he would he would say yeah back up tessa blanchard by saying yeah you know i uh i i understand um i'm i back her 100 percent you know the coronavirus pandemic I wouldn't want her to go there because she might not get back into Mexico. I wouldn't hurt her. I wouldn't want her to try to, to to leave Mexico and and not be able to get back in. But nope. Uh uh-uh. uh. Daga says uh, while Tessa Blanchard has refused to work, that he was willing to work. So Tessa Blanchard's fiance was 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 actually willing to work. Uh, for for impact wrestling he said he would have worked the tapings he would have worked the tapings uh the past two tapings but but thing is he uh, he wasn't booked he wasn't booked he said he would have he would have attempted to get out of mexico to to get to the impact wrestling tapings because he wants to work because he wants to work so tessa blanchard doesn't want to travel doesn't want to make any attempt to get out of mexico to work the tapings to do her job because she's worried about you know not being able to get back into mexico but her boyfriend her fiance has no problem giving it a shot no problem giving it a shot so so looks uh, I'm, I'm thinking there might have been a, a heated discussion about the situation between the two uh so who knows? Daga is still on the contract. We we still might see Daga coming. Well, he's not going to be at Slammiversary. He says he said he's not booked for the pay per view. If he's at the next set of tapings, if he's at the next set of tapings, you know, if he can get out, he wants to work. We could see uh we could see him back at the Impact Wrestling tapings. And as for Tessa Blanchard, as for Tessa Blanchard, there's rumors that she might be making her debut for the WWE in August for Evolution Two. So. So I guess I guess working for the WWE, uh, she'll take the chance. She'll take the chance to, to leave the country uh, to go work for the WWE. But she won't take the chance to leave the country to go work for Impact Wrestling, the company that put faith in her, that made her the first ever women's world heavyweight champion. Real nice, Tessa Blanchard. Real nice, Tessa. On that note, I, I would just say good riddance, Tessa Blanchard. Good luck in the WWE. I hope they don't screw up your career. Okay, so let's let's move on. Kara Hogan. Kara Hogan is is upset that she has been passed up for um, a title shot for basically three years. She's been with the company for three years, and she's upset that uh, kind of upset that Diona Perrazzo coming into the company for the for the first time is getting an immediate title shot. And, and I I completely concur. I completely understand where uh, where Kara Hogan's coming from. She's been busting her. Busting her ass for three years, and she's a tremendous talent, and she's being passed over, and she should be in the knockouts title picture, and she's not. 
she's in a in a she's doing a terrific thing right now with um with Tasha Steeles. They're, they're a great tag team, one of my favorite tag teams right now in in Impact Wrestling. One of my favorite things in Impact Wrestling right now is is that tag team, and uh, she actually did say that it's it's she truly believes that the knockout um, tag team titles will be coming back. And uh, I, I I hope they do, but uh, and I think her and Tasha Steeles deserve to be Impact Wrestling Knockout Tag Team Champions if they do bring the title back. But I also feel Kiara Hogan should be in the Knockouts title picture. So at the Gauntlet match at Slammiversary, I'm 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 hoping Kiara Hogan wins it and becomes a number one contender because she has a legitimate gripe. She has a legitimate gripe. You know, Diano Perazzo coming in and getting an immediate title shot. You also have to think that Diano Prazo's time might be limited in Impact Wrestling. It might just be a, a few dates or just one set of tapings and some anniversary and she might be out. Uh, I don't think she's signed a contract yet. Hopefully she will. Uh, nothing's been said officially, so that could be the reason why Diona Prazo is getting uh, an immediate title shot. But Kara Hogan deserves it. Kara Hogan deserves to be in the title picture, and I hope she wins the gauntlet match at Slammiversary, and I hope she becomes a number one contender. As I will say it again, don't want to keep repeating myself, but she definitely deserves to be in the title picture. Kara Hogan. Quick rundown of of all the matches that have been anniversary. There were six matches signed. Uh, so the main event, as we know, is Ace Austin versus Eddie Edwards versus Trey Miguel versus a an opponent to be determined, a fatal four-way for the Impact Wrestling World Championship. Jordan Grace against Diona Prazo for the Impact Wrestling Knockout Championship. Willie Mack versus Chris Bay for the X Division Championship. The gauntlet for the gold match to determine the number one contender for the Impact Wrestling Knockout Championship. I was just talking about that. It's Alicia Edwards versus Havoc versus Kiera Hogan, who I hope wins. I'll say it again. Versus Kimberly versus Kylie Ray versus Nevaeh versus Madison Ray versus Rosemary versus Susie versus Tasha Steeles versus Taya Valkyrie. Uh, so that should be a, be a great one. Then you have the North, Ethan Page, Josh Alexander, one of the best tag teams in the world today against Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan. Should be a terrific match. Uh, tag team match for the Impact uh, Tag Team Championship. Then you have Moose um, defending the TNA World Heavyweight, Ch- Heavyweight Championship against Tommy Dreamer. A uh, match that I said earlier I don't think is going to happen. Uh, we, I definitely believe that Moose and EC3 will be face-to-face at Slammiversary. So those six matches have been announced, and I'm sure we're going to get a few more matches will be announced as well for Slammiversary, but it's shaping up to be just an absolutely absolutely tremendous card can't say it enough i know i said it earlier before but just can't say it enough how awesome that this entire show is going to be i can't wait for it so let's move on there were a couple of um actually two there were two uh, troll comments that got me a little upset true two troll comments that got me a little upset uh, this week, and uh, let's let's read the first one. Uh, actually, it was uh, in response to uh, Impact Wrestling announcing that it's uh, Moose versus Tommy Dreamer for the TNA title. Some guy gets on and says, "This is the kind of shit that TNA or Impact or whatever the hell they are calling it these days are in the dumps right now. This is the kind of shit that has TNA or Impact or whatever the hell they're calling it these days in the dumps right now." That that's the that was his comment. First of all, he's commenting on Moose versus Tommy Dreamer. If there's one kind of negative thing about Slammiversary, you could make an argument that it's that match. You kind of were hoping that Moose, you know, we he would have a better opponent than Tommy Dreamer. If not taken away from Tommy Dreamer, Tommy Dreamer is a, a legend. He's been around for a long time. Been a fan of his since the '90s. But you kind of thinking that maybe it's a you would be getting a different opponent. Uh, but but I went on I went on the other match announcements, and this this gentleman was nowhere to be seen. You know, didn't make any any comment on on any other um, match announcement for Slammiversary. But he made a comment on this one, and and. It's just it's it's funny how you know he concentrates on the one possible potentially negative match, but he's silent about the the rest of the phenomenal card, you know. And he doesn't mention at all that that uh, if 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 Impact Wrestling, first of all, he's not sure what they're calling it right now. Everyone knows it's Impact Wrestling, 
Everyone knows it's Impact Wrestling. Uh, and they're not in the dumps right now. He doesn't mention anything about, you know, the signing of Gallows and, Gallows and Anderson. He doesn't mention anything about EC3, you know, potentially coming. He doesn't mention anything about Eric Young potentially coming coming to um, the Impact Wrestling. He doesn't mention anything about, you know, Chris Saban possibly making his return. He doesn't mention anything about Bully Ray possibly making his return. They're down in the dumps right now. Why, why do all these people want to come back and work for Impact Wrestling? It's a stupid comment from a stupid individual who's got nothing better to do with his life uh, but uh, look for the most you know, possibly negative thing uh, about impact wrestling and um, and um, speak um, speak stupid crap about it so so it, it's really dumb so that that was that was dumb comment dumb comment you know kind of pissed me off and I, I did respond to him and there was another comment as well you know when they they announced um, uh, also also on the uh, the moose versus Tommy dreamer um, match announcement. You know, some guy gets on and says, "Huh? I thought there was a fatal four way. I can't keep up." And somebody explained to him what's going on, and he's like, "Thanks, but it's so confusing." Yeah, it's real confusing. First of all, first of all, it, it wouldn't be confusing. It wouldn't be confusing at all if you were actually watching Impact Wrestling. If you followed Impact Wrestling, if you watched Impact Wrestling on Access TV, on Twitch, or or on Impact Plus, wherever you watch it. Uh, it wouldn't be confusing. And even if you're not watching it, it's really not that confusing. It's really not that confusing. There's a fatal four-way match for the Impact Wrestling World title, and Moose is defending the the TNA title. It's unsanctioned. It's these claims to be the TNA champion. He's defending that title against Tommy Dreamer. So what in the world is so confusing? What's so confusing about that? It's not confusing at all. It's very simple. It's very simple. And I responded. I said, it's not confusing at all. He didn't respond to me, this guy. But but where's the confusion? You know, it's, it's just another guy saying, oh, TNA. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Impact, well, I said TNA because it's TNA title match. But, you know, Impact Wrestling is so confusing these days. So you don't know what's going on. Uh -huh. You know, you would know what's going on if you're watching, you know, if you're watching the show. So it's another guy who is, who is, who's kind of being negative, but he's not really watching Impact Wrestling. So, you know more more stupidity more stupid trolls nothing better to do so they have to uh, they have to comment and uh, I just I just, just want to call them out on that well, what what they should be concerned with what they should be concerned with is the WWE they announced that uh, that they're having something called an eye for an eye match uh, an eye for an eye match let's talk about this for a second an eye for an eye match and the the stipulation the the I should say the winner of this match will be will be determined by their opponents what they have to do is rip their opponent's eye out of its socket that's right so the winner of this match the loser of the match is actually going to have their eye ripped out of their socket that's the stipulation of this match so it's Rey Mysterio against uh, I think Seth Rollins. Uh, I think there was an eye injury or something in the past uh, between the two. So so I think it was when I was reading Rey Mysterio wanted an eye for an eye match, and um, someone's eye is gonna get ripped out of its socket. It's the most stupidest, dumbest thing I've ever heard in in my history of being a professional wrestling fan. And I've been a professional wrestling fan since 1978. Since 1978, yes, I'm, I'm a little older than most people. So I've been a wrestling fan since 1978. And this is going to be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. First of all, kids are going to be watching this. Kids are going to be watching this. And, and then and I'm sure it's going to be some FX or, or some gooey crap or whatever special effects um, eye on the, on the ring apron thing that they're going to be doing. It's, it's just stupid. It's dumb. So next time any Impact Wrestling trolls want to get on the Impact Wrestling page and they want to speak negatively about Impact Wrestling, maybe they should stop and think about the WWE having a match in which the winner is determined by ripping their opponent's eye out of their socket and maybe going to the WWE page and maybe making fun of that uh, for a little bit. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much. My name is Lewis Carlin. Thanks for listening today. This has been Shooting Up North. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.